In this discussion, we're going to qualitatively talk about what happens when you add negative feedback to an amplifier. So in this case, we have an operational amplifier, an op amp. So we know it has a non-inverting input, an inverting input. There's an output terminal. So in reality, there's a voltage supply, positive supply, and a negative supply. These two supplies right here provide the power to the op amp to do the thing that it does to amplify and to deliver power out to the load. Like there's some kind of load out here. It's represented as a box. That's usually connected to ground. So power oftentimes flows out of the load. Sometimes it could flow into the load. That really depends on you know, what's going on in your circuit. So how do you set the gain on something like this? Now you saw the equations you know, for a non-inverting amplifier. Just draw it. We have the V in. V out appears across this wire. And then we have two resistors. This is going to ground in this example right here. We'll call this one R1 and this one's R2. And you learned about in lecture that the gain of this device, meaning that V out over Vn equals 1 plus R2 over R1. So that's the gain equation. And so you can see the gain is related really to the ratio of the two resistors right here. You know, and then there's this unity component in here, which says that you can't get a gain less than one. It can't be fractional with this kind of circuit. So if you look at the circuit, if you look at this node right here and follow it down, you can see there's a voltage divider. And I could just draw it out really quick over here. So you have R2, R1, and this is V out over there. And what this is saying is, is that the voltage that we apply to the negative terminal is really going to be a function of the ratio of the two resistors. And with negative feedback, the more negative feedback we put into this amplifier, the smaller the gain's going to be. And if you look at the gain equation right here, you could see how that would work. Like if R2 was really small, like really if it went to zero and R1 went to infinity, you know, in the limiting cases, you literally take those out of the circuit, you have a straight wire in there. Then if R2 is zero, divided by infinity is going to be zero, so you just have a gain of one. And this is what we call a, a follower a voltage follower, it says that the output voltage is going to equal the input voltage. And we could quickly analyze this just thinking about the op amp equation. So remember the op amp equation says that V in or V positive, in other words, the non-inverting input equals V negative, the inverting input when you're in closed loop. So closed loop means you're not saturating and the amplifier is able to do what it can do. So just looking at the circuit right here, so V out is the same as the V minus terminal. And the V minus terminal has to be the same as the V in terminal. So they're all equal right there. And that is really how you can analyze a follower, which is probably the simplest closed loop negative feedback amplifier. So we could go the other way where we have a gigantic resistor over here and then a short circuit over there, and then our gains can get really large. As R2 goes to infinity or R1 goes to zero, this is just going to blow up. So in this situation, the limiting factor is really the gain inside the op amp. Like in an ideal op amp, we say that the gain is infinity, but in reality it's not. In most op amps, it's somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. So the op amps are very non-ideal, and they depend on the feedback in order to linearize the op amp. So that's a discussion for a later class. But the important take home right here though is just to realize that you know, this R1 and R2 circuit is really just a voltage divider, just like this one right here. And it says that the gain is gonna go down the more voltage gets to this node. In other words, the smaller R2 is and the larger R1 is, the gain's gonna go down.